Hey, it's Sick Boy from the Gaming Anarchist Collective, and I need to deal with something yet again. It is the subject of video game violence and violent people. Now, there's been a recent tragedy in the UK that has very much shocked the country. It, it's appalling. A teacher, Anne Maguire, she, I believe she was 61, she was close to retirement, was stabbed to death in her class by a 15-year-old boy who was one of her pupils. It's a terrible tragedy. My heart goes out to the community and her family because this is a tragic loss. It is absolutely appalling. And what offends me deeply is that certain newspapers, namely the Daily Mail, a well-known hack tabloid magazine, has leapt on this and decided to try and label this boy. Now this boy has been described as a loner, as a victim of bullying, a listener of metal music and a gamer. Specifically, he has made posts about Grand Theft Auto and Dark Souls. Apparently, they must be linked in some way to his violent acts. There's a photo of him with a blurred out face, long hair, and an Achievement Hunters t-shirt on. They've said that he has spoken about video games and he is a fan of death metal. His Facebook profile has a picture of the Grim Reaper on. Now, I challenge, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this either have that or have a dragon or something dark or listen to metal. I'm sure there are lots of you who would say, and how is that in any way relevant? And it's not. I want to just cover a brief modern history of one, the Daily Mail, and secondly, this kind of ridiculousness. Okay, so, I'm going to go back just to the 80s, rather than go all the way back to the Daily Mail's links with promoting Nazis, because that is really irrelevant and frankly doesn't really represent the modern situation. So, let's start where the story should in fact start. Let's start with John Lennon. Now, John Lennon was shot by Mark Chapman. And when the Beatles frontman, who obviously split off and became a major personality in of his own right, was shot by Mark Chapman. Mark Chapman had a copy of the book Catcher in the Rye, which if you've ever read it is frankly the most overrated shocking book you've ever heard. It is a fairly tedious book about teenage angst and self-destruction. Then the book was considered a dangerous book. It was banned in a lot of countries because it made people crazy. It was the book that turned you mad. Do you know what happened? It made the book more popular. This, you will see, is a cyclical event and it will repeat itself. That happened. There is now pretty much no country that bans Catcher in the Rye, but for nearly th for 30 years, this book was a taboo book. Now, in recent, very last couple of years only, the ban's been lifted in the US. It was banned in America for nearly 30 years. That's crazy. Now, go on a few more years. They've blamed their books. Books have been blamed for hundreds of years. In fact, if you can go back and you can see how the works of the Marquis de Sade, books like The Monk as well, were blamed, Lady Chatterley's Lover, were blamed on over the last, over hundreds and hundreds of years. These works of fiction have been considered corrupting of the youth. It appears because there are two types of people in this world, really. There are the ironic and the literal. And the literal are afraid by things. They're afraid by things they don't understand and the things they don't like. And then there are the satirical that revel in a bit of dark humour, a bit of dark fantasy, and they, they like to explore mentally where things are. And they are not corrupted as by these things. And now there are people, of course, who are ill who become corrupted. That is because they're already ill. A perfectly healthy person does not read Catcher in the Rye and go out and shoot a rock star. Does not happen that way. A damaged person becomes obsessed with something. A paedophile may read Lolita, but Lolita may not make you a paedophile. These are simple facts that have been proved time and time again by psychologists and by behavioural science in general, there is no cause, correlation between these things and violent acts. Now, moving on to something more shocking than the death of John Lennon was the death of Jamie Bulger. Now, I'm not going to even mention the names of the murders of this boy because it still makes me feel physically sick. I was a very young boy when this happened. I remember watching it on the news and being deeply sickened. Deeply sickened. And... I was younger than the boys who committed this crime. They were around seven or eight at the time. 
Um, just to recap the story, not to go into too many gory details. Uh, young Jimmy Bulger was a toddler in Liverpool. He was abducted by some older boys. They took him down to the river and they tortured him to death for about 20 hours. A lot of the information was not released to the public because it was too shocking. They tortured this boy in ways you couldn't imagine, in a way that would make Eli Roth wince for 20 full hours. It was one of the most shocking crimes in British history. It was appalling. And what happened is, these boys went through trial, now they spent life in prison, they've had their names changed, one of which came out of prison under guard, uh, had a partner who had a child, ended up becoming a, convicted of being a child molester, went back in prison again. These are some very disturbed individuals. I don't know why they were given, they were allowed back in the community, frankly, they were clearly too broken to be out in society. Now, it was brought up in the newspapers that at the time, Child's Play 3 had been released. For those who aren't aware of Child's Play, it is the story of a possessed doll. Uh, Brad Dorf has possessed a doll, and he is haunting essentially a young boy called Andy because he wants to take over his body. Now, by the third film, Andy's a little bit older, he's at an uh, army school, and Chucky hunts him down and murders a load of kids in this corrective army school. Now, some things that happened to Jamie Bulger were reminiscent of what happened in Child's Play. It turns out they had watched Child's Play and they were no doubt influenced by some of the terrible ways in which to cruelly murder somebody. Uh, they of course caused that as a cause and effect and said that Child's Play was a cause of the murder of Jamie Bulger. When of course it was not. What it was is it was something that the people who did murder Jane Bulger were unhealthily fixated on and they were exposed to, not necessarily because they were too young, but because they were not mentally fit. When you go into their background, it has nothing to do with the film. Their, their patterns of their lives, the psychology, their lively upbringing comes down to all of the key factors that they're essentially victims that grew up to become monsters. They were poorly treated, they became monsters. Now not everybody poorly treated becomes a monster, but almost everybody who is a monster has been poorly treated in some way, either by their loved ones or by somebody else. That is the cyclical nature of abuse. So, that was videos. That was film video nasties, films out on VHS in the 80s. They were the devil and were to be avoided. Now let's leap forward a little bit to the 1990s. Let's look at things like the Columbine Massacre. Now video games weren't the big thing. Adult video games certainly were not the big thing at the time of the Columbine Massacre. And what did they blame for that? Marilyn Manson. Nowadays they tend to blame rap music, but back then they tend to more often than not blame metal, as they have in the case, this modern case, they have in fact blamed metal again. And they blamed it on Marilyn Manson. Which is, again, ludicrous. Now, the documentary Bowling for Columbine makes the fair point, why don't they blame bowling? Because the last thing they did, before they murdered hundreds of, well, not hundreds, sorry, dozens of people, was go bowling. They went to their bowling class. Then they murdered their classmates. No one blamed bowling. They blame metal. Because metal, Marilyn Manson, is weird-looking, and he's new, and he's frightening. If you are... If you are a literally minded person, you see someone like Marilyn Manson, you may consider, you may be apprehensive about him, you may consider him disturbing, you may think there's something wrong with him, you may think he's satanic and evil, and the things that he says to make points are in fact literally what he means. Which of course, he is not a literal person. His job is not to be literal about what he says. What he says, he says through allegory and satire. And these literal individuals can't handle that. So these newspapers and these pundits and these scared suburbanites complain and blame the monsters. Now, just around about that time, Grand Theft Auto was due to be released. Before Rockstar were Rockstar, they created this game. Their previous big game was, of course, Lemmings. They wanted some publicity. They wanted to drum up some publicity. They made the game because they wanted to make what they enjoyed and they went down a dark path to make a very dark and violent game. One of the most dark and violent games that had ever been made. 
still is one of the most dark, the GTA series is still among the darkest games ever made. And of course, with their sense of humour tied in. So there's, of course, a sense of humour about the darkness, and that's what seems to disturb a lot of people. Again, the literally minded people. So what did they do? They hired one of the UK's top publicists, in fact, the top publicist up until very recently, Max Clifford. Now, Max Clifford said, I will do this. I will target these newspapers. I will target these members of parliament with these stories. They will pick it up and they will go crazy. The puritanical, literal individuals will blame the video game. They will say, this game is corrupting the youth because they don't understand the youth because they are no longer young. So, in fact, Rockstar themselves uh, take a great deal of blame when it comes to propagating the myth that video games cause violence. They hired a man who spent his time and effort earning money for them and for himself by painting gamers as monsters. And it's worked all too well. Because it's been nearly 20 years and people still talk about Grand Theft Auto as the big bad. To the point where they had to throw in a torture scene just to be shocking. Incidentally, as a side point, I was going to make a video about this down the line, and I may well do, where I uh, have a bit of a rant about him. Max Clifford, incidentally, the, uh, the man who riled up the Puritans to get them all angry, full of vitriol, about this monstrous thing that's corrupting our children, he was convicted on Monday of eight counts of sexual assault. That's right. That's right. The man who was getting all of the puritanical individuals frothing at the mouth at the same time, was raping young women. Let that sink in for one minute, and you'll understand the difference between the literal and the ironic personality. That's where you have the danger. These, there are sick individuals out there, and they will choose to misuse and misrepresent those who are somewhat of a darker sense of humour, somewhat of an ironic bent, and they will manipulate the literal, and utilise their outrage to dehumanise people who just want to enjoy themselves. This happens time and time again. It is a sick misuse. Now, onto the Daily Mail themselves. Oh, the Daily Mail. Now, this rag has many, many a time. It fluffs up race problems. It talks about child abuse to an unhealthy degree that freaks people out. It obsesses people about the value of their property, which was one of the major contributing factors to the housing crash, were the sort of people who would obsess about house prices, mortgage rates, rates of interest. They will go on and demonise everybody that they do not understand or like. Now, one thing I want to just to point out here. Now, if you were to Google murder under Google News, not just under Google, but Google News, you'll get about 150 million hits in less than a second. I went a little look through there to see how many had been absolutely... Couldn't see all of them, of course, because there's 150 million of them. But I just had a quick glance through the first couple of pages, how many of them were even tangentially linked to, to video games. Well, of course, one was the case I'm in fact talking about now. That was there up near the top because it was, of course, a recent murder. And most of the, of course, murders happen all the time. Did video games cause cartel violence? No, it doesn't. You can't find a single murder case where video games have been proven to be the causal factor. There are terrible cases where people are playing video games and do terrible things, or people who play video games doing terrible things. There are awful cases out there of gamers who murder their children because they get in the way of them playing Call of Duty. And that's one thing I'd like to also mention. I really want to start disassociating the word gamer, because gaming is such a major mainstream thing now. We're not all gamers anymore. I used to think we're all gamers. We're not all gamers. You might as well say we're all film watchers, we're all TV watchers, we're all music listeners. Video gaming is a major, major entertainment medium. You can no longer be defined because you play video games. Are you heavily invested in video games? Are you highly interested in video games? Then yeah, we need a title, and perhaps Hardcore Gamer is probably too pretentious, but something that all that signifies you have a particular interest in video games, rather than an interest in a video game. 
I think that should certainly be done, the distinction of saying we're all gamers, bringing in gamers, lumbering us all together. Lumbering the sort of psychopath that smothers their infant because it's crying when they want to play a video game. That's a problem. Now, we should all work and do our best to do what we can to convince others and prove the fact that there is no link between these things and violence. Call of Duty, the franchise itself has sold tens of millions of copies. How many Call of Duty players have murdered people? Even if it was cor correlation and causation, even if Call of Duty made those people murder, what is that as a percentage of Call of Duty gamers? It's not even a fraction of 1%. It is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Really? So, so. It's such a tiny proportion. But anyway, back to the Daily Mail. Things the Daily Mail have done in the past, as I've said, and the major thing, the thing that I despise them for, actually despise them for. Like, as in, if, if they were a person, I would openly hate them, and I don't hate many people. But the, if the Daily Mail was a person, I would despise them. Now, back around the early 2000s, there was a doctor by the name of Andrew Wakefield. He was a quack. He claimed that the measles, mumps and rubella vaccine caused autism because he said that there was an increase in the diagnosis of autism and that that was caused by a vaccine. Now, it's worth mentioning that the diagnosis of autism hasn't really been a big thing until about 20, 30 years. We're only recently dealing with autistic spectrum disorder, Asperger's and the like. To say autistic just used to be somebody who was a complete non-functioning autistic who would literally be spending their lives locked in their own head. Or you'd have perhaps the savants. They'd be called the idiot savant, which is a terrible phrase, but it's what they used to use, and that would be Rain Man. That'd be the sort of person that would really, you wouldn't think they were paying attention, and then all of a sudden could count how many matchsticks were on the floor. Those people, the sort of people who could look at something and then they can do a perfect recreation after a split second of looking at it. Those people are referred to, were referred to certainly as idiot savants, which is a terrible phrase. But all, essentially all video game programmers, all programmers practically, all accountants probably have high functioning Asperger's. It is a very common condition with those who are meticulous. And to say I'm on the autistic spectrum just literally means you are somebody who gets, who tends to be focused on something that other people may find mundane you'll find that on average, people on that autistic spectrum tend to, um, maybe they like to make models, they like to draw, they like to do something that other people may find particularly tedious, and there's nothing wrong with that. But he made this link, and it terrified the middle class, particularly down to the fact that the Daily Mail pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. They have deleted a great number of their online articles where they used to say that it causes autism. MMR causes autism. MMR causes autism. They would go, oh, other scientists say not. All scientists, all medics, all researchers, all people who knew what they were talking about knew that there was no link between vaccinating your child and giving them autism. This man has since been struck off. He can no longer practice medicine because he's a quack. And what happened in the last few years since this whole palaver happened. These children were born. They weren't vaccinated. They have gone to school. And a number of them have died. Hundreds. Hundreds of children have died from measles. Because the Daily Mail, day after day after day after day, spewed this poison and warped and terrified parents to the point where they created danger for their own children out of fear of giving them a disorder. This is what people like they do. This is what the literal and the scaremongery do to people. They fill you with fear. There's a reason why when people walk into a lift, a load of white people in a lift and a black person walks in, even if they're not racist, at least a proportion of them will all of a sudden change how they stand. And these people aren't even racist, but these are the sort of things that become propagated by this kind of spreading abuse. This is exactly the kind of thing that pushes ultranationalism, that pushes racism, bigotry, homophobia, these kinds of things. Now, if you have rational, if you are a rational individual and have 
opinions on things and don't abuse other people, that's less of a problem than those who come out and evangelically speak about how terrible things are and they, ex they exaggerate them and they twist hate and they put hate in the hearts of those who might have a question or two. They might ask a, an honest question like why in a poor area are people more likely to be violent? And the likes of the Daily Mail will come out and say because they're evil scum. Somebody with a bit more of an intellectual brain might say well on average if you are living in a poor area, you are less likely to be educated, you are less likely to have a good upbringing, you are less likely to have any money, you are more likely to slip into drug abuse, alcoholism, mental illness that goes untreated, and therefore is a cycle of violence and a cycle of instability, and of course, a lot of children with nothing to do, so frankly the only way they can entertain themselves is by setting fire to your car. There's nothing wrong with saying, I don't want to leave my car in this area because some kid's going to set it on fire. That is a rational self-preservation technique. However, to turn around and say, oh, you're poor, you're evil scum, that's the sort of thing that the likes of the Daily Mail will spew. They're a sick individual organisation. If they were a person, I would despise them. As I said, few people in the world I hate. If the Daily Mail was a person, I would punch them in the face. They are vile. They are reveling in the death of a 61-year-old woman murdered by a disturbed, bullied victim who played video games and listened to metal music and somehow that corrupted him. Not the fact that he was clearly not well, not the fact that he was clearly not given the correct upbringing and looked after and protected and given a sense of perspective. No, had nothing to do with what he liked. He had everything to do with what was going on in his head and that he was not receiving help. This is a tragedy and for you to make money from this sickens me. Makes you vile. Makes you worse than any gamer who hasn't committed a crime. How dare you twist the facts to push it on millions of people. There is only one person responsible for this murder and that was the young man who committed the murder. There are some causal effects and I'm sure their parents, I'm sure his parents and his bullies had a huge part to play in shaping this story. But the video games he played had precisely nothing to do with it. Now in the description field I'm going to put all the links of some of the things that I've discussed today but I'll also include something a little bit interesting. A book about medieval young people that goes into about how young people require certain degrees of control, they require it to be brought up properly, otherwise they backslide into moral badness, drinking, sex, antisocial behaviour, because they don't have a strong mother and father figure in their lives. They don't have good parents. They're not properly occupied. The stories that we talk about now are the same stories that have been happening for centuries, for millennia. It is what happens. It is part of the human condition. It is the sickness of the human condition that we must rise up and try and help. Every generation that comes up, try and teach the next to be better than you. And maybe eventually we will reach some kind of pinnacle where we can be a better species than we in fact are. If you look at the way we are now, you look at where within the last 30, 40, 50 years, how things have progressed, they've progressed greatly. Has sexism decreased? Yes, it has. Has homophobia decreased? It has. Transphobia decreased? Yes, it has. Racism, most kinds of bigotry, has decreased in general. Religious bigotry, however is at right now an all-time high, I'd say. Since the bloody Crusades, I don't think I've seen... The, since the Crusades or the Third Reich have I seen this much division on the grounds of religion. This may well be Queen Mary... This might as well just be Queen Mary executing everybody who has the wrong faith. This may as well be Torquemada and his Spanish Inquisition. Who nobody expects. Couldn't help out to throw a joke in. But... This is the problem. And as gamers, I understand the desire to get angry. I was furious when I saw this story. I was sick to the back teeth and I wanted to shout and rant and rave and tell them what sick, sick individuals they were. But on reflection, I collected myself and I decided that I would put this together 
just sit down and just speak from the top of my head and explain why this is abject quackery. Instantly on a, also a point, if you want more of an in-depth discussion from somebody with regards to the MMR vaccine, check out Dr. Ben Goldacre's Bad Science. Met the guy before, very nice, very knowledgeable, and puts to bed a lot of quackery. One of his biggest things being his debunking of the MMR. On top of that, many other things. Nice man, very knowledgeable. Now, everybody, try and be calm about this. Try not to freak out. Try and just explain to people who you know who aren't gamers that being a gamer is not an anything. You're not a gamer. You're a person who plays games. You're a person who enjoys a certain entertainment medium. It doesn't corrupt you. It doesn't change you. It doesn't twist you. It doesn't make you dangerous. Nor does the music you listen to. Your actions and your behaviours define you, not how you entertain yourself. It has nothing to do with it. If you harm others, then you can be criticised for harming others. Until that time, you are an innocent individual pursuing your own interests. Anyway guys, thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys later.